Better? Yeah? Everyone can hear that? Yeah. What's loud in Irish? Anybody? What's loud in Irish? Anybody? But what's loud in Irish? What's loud in Irish? What's loud in Irish? I'll be a I guess toss a fresh in there. First badge, I have to say, I'm wearing my shirtless badge from all the way from, uh, where is it from, Greg? Half Moon Bay, California. Half Moon Bay, because they couldn't get the full moon. Yeah. Yeah. Half Moon Bay in California. Got half. You got the other half. Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. Anyway, you're all welcome to tea cakes and poetry. The whole idea, as we all know of this, is just that people can read a poem, recite a poem, tell a story, tell a joke, sing a song, say a song, play a song. Do whatever they wish. Harsha, harsha, harsha. And you can, everybody's welcome. There's no, you know, admission is free. You pay to get out. <laughs> um, if you haven't heard it before. <laughs> um, it's just about dreams. Someone from the bottom block said to me someday there, a couple of years ago, I wonder would you get piles on a hot day? Just before we leave Spike, just before we leave Spike, you all know what's on his grave. This, this is Van Rogers, yeah. You all know. It the Dutch may let go out my chin. I told you I was sick. Poet, as we know from, uh, is it this collection? Yeah, is it this? The, yes, this is the one. Yes. Oh, you're not going to read the poem though, okay. Brilliant writer. As well. This is especially for all the Americans. Um, it's a childhood memory. Uh, when we were children, it was the highlight of our year when the Yanks were coming. Uh, but I will have you know, woman from Father Angelus Park, all of us in the bottom block of the present were well used to smoke. Coach, do we? Yeah, they're not important. Coach sound as well, yeah. We always welcome the top block people. For those of you who don't know, St. Mary's Crescent has two blocks. The top block and the bottom block. And the bottom block obviously is the better, but we know that. We won't go there. It's nice to be welcomed into the Covey uh, family. Um, I've been brought up outside the speed limit. I wasn't sure if I qualified or not. <laughs> no. You work for the council. You can change uh, the speed limit. I'm only a sheep farmer. I'm only a sheep farmer from Ahagar. Around 182 Hoggets, so I don't know if I qualify or not. No. I feel like the Taliban coming in here from the hills or something. <clears throat> and we used to wake up. We used to be woken up, I suppose, in the dark. And we'd wake up the cattle in the dark as well, and the cattle would be giving you a funny look just to see what the hell was going on. And normally you wouldn't sell the cattle, and the cattle would have to be brought home again. And it was so bad at one stage that you could abandon the cattle on Altamont Street and they'd kind of walk home themselves. <laughs> and you know, the twists and turns, and you could kind of go on the beer for the day and be waiting at the gate when you came home. The bottom block, this is the chief. <laughs> when we were in the bottom block in the Crescent, we were in a gang. A gang. We were like the Irish army, all peacemakers. We were in Charlie's gang, and this is Charlie, Charlie Keating. And on one of the little trips, you know, we'd go robbing tires, you know, for the bonfires and all that. But we were younger than Charlie. We settled for the tires and the bushes. But on one of the trips up to Father Angela's Park, he started stealing their women. And he got one. <laughs> And she's still with him. <laughs> and that's why there's peace to this day between Father Angelus Park and St. Mary's Crest. <laughs> I could be here all day talking about Westport, but I'm going to give you a song, <clears throat> one of the first songs that I suppose was sang and, and came out of Westport was uh, Peggy Brown. She was the daughter of Peter Brown. Westport House. That was way back in the early 1700s, late 1600s. And uh... isn't it great that we can sit back here in an afternoon, a Thursday afternoon in the middle of summer, and welcome so many people from San Francisco and Chicago and wherever, and just to have this little bit of a gathering. That's Thank all. you. That's all. Johnny, will to Ray, will to. I don't want to do it. Do sticks for the week. Come on, you do sticks for the week. I think the song that wrote a few years ago was the crack of going up the reek. <coughs> uh, just to say it's here. Huh? It's just to say it's here. You don't have to be <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear you. It's on the reek and help you move. Keep you from falling and breaking your neck. Nice and easy, that's the old trick. You stick to the back. 
Oh, can I have a hand on the form? Go back. Oh, no, no, no. Right. It's about Claude Patrick. And speaking of which, this is Reek Week. Were you, were you up there? Are we today? We Patrick, to... oh, you were up there? Yeah. Today? Today. You were up there today? Yes, we all went today. Yes, I see. Is it any wonder we left at the end? Time for coming in there. Yeah, yeah. Paddy Hopkins, um, I knew Paddy quite well. I got involved with Paddy uh, first of all in Mehel and Dowen. It was a, it was a, a conference here and a collection, um, collection for, for the third world before, I suppose it was in the late uh, 1980s. And uh, uh, Paddy, I didn't know Paddy up till then, but. Uh, uh, I got to know him, and um, you know, he, he, he was a great character. No more than Frank, he, he left Westport during the, the emergency, and he decided uh, like that uh, he, he'd, he'd go and, and join, of course, the, the British Army, and like a lot of people, they, they did. Uh, I got to know him, as I said, then after we formed a group that was uh, uh, called the Friends of Crow Patrick. Or the, and from there, uh, the Mayo Environmental Group were formed. But, uh, at that time, we, we were very small when, when we noticed people up on, on Crow Patrick were uh, drilling rigs and, and they, were, uh, they were basically sinking to sea what type of deposits they could get. And of course, uh, there was a bit of an uproar and uh, people suddenly just, they were out walking on Bertram, most people, and they suddenly saw this uh, road heading up towards the side of Crowpatrick from the, the Canvey side, and people weren't very happy with it. Anyway, this group was formed, and, and uh, this is uh, the Friends of Crow Patrick, if you were called. Some people, we went around collecting money around the town at the time, I remember, and there were some people that didn't welcome us very well now, to be quite honest with you. And it's funny, a lot of those people had more to gain from preserving the reek and the tourist industry. But uh, I leave that for another day. Johnny wrote this song and I, I think <laughs> I went over to Johnny one day. Johnny lived in the lodge at Belle Claire house. That was Livingston's place, I suppose, originally. And after that, John Healy's dance hall. And Johnny lived there with his young family. And of course, I brought my young son with me. And <laughs> the funny thing about it was, <laughs> Johnny was inside with a hat, you know. And Robin said to me, my son, he said, Jeez, he said, uh, Dad, he said, is Johnny Fadgen? He says, is he really a cowboy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I said, he is, you know. But on the way back, we wrote a song about Johnny Fadgen, the cowboy. But we, won't, we won't go down that road now. But, uh, Johnny gave me that song then. And uh, it was uh, an absolute brilliant song. I, I, I love the song. And, and, and uh, it is a great feeling. It's all about the mountain. <laughs> Tunes to we're talking about Castle Barrow, funny enough, to uh, uh, 
the pecker drone was born on the side of the road in Castle Bar. It's going to be good fun. That was the kind of slide of the banjo playing against it. was a trick with him. Even, even the sewing machine is a singer, isn't that it? That's it. <laughs> no, I don't know. This is Una Devine. Una Devine. This is a vacancy in the Trinity. She'll have a guitar if that's why she's going to Divine by name and nature. Divine by name and nature. If this... Sorry, no. Well, uh, oh God. <laughs> Your Never question sang... time, Ger. Never sang into a mic before. No. So, uh, so it's rather just in time. In keeping with Castle Bar, then we'll keep it country. You're on a roll. 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 you are on a uh, from the initiation of COVID week, uh, we decided to have on Week Sunday a remembrance hour in the local cemetery, remembering all COVIDs. And then on occasions like the historic FAI Junior Cup win by Westbrook United, on that Week Sunday we visited the graves of soccer players and soccer supporters in Ottawa. I do a, a do a song called. Uh... It was written by Pori Collin, the, the, the famous poet. Sort of appropriate for this time of the year and the wild geese that have come back to us from the States and England and all over. And I see Johnny Fadgen has just joined us. Johnny, you're very welcome. Thanks, you're very welcome because I have a special request for you. I want you to do your own song when you get either this second or if you want to do a breather. Uh, I know you're only in the door, but the song is still with you. God's creation, I want you to dedicate it then to Paddy Hopkins. Paddy Hopkins is no longer with us. We left, we left Paddy off about a month, less than two weeks ago. Clary, you think your version of it? You, 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 you. But you don't fight over those hands. I don't want to. We're going to dedicate it to Paddy Hopkins. Paddy Hopkins was one of our, one of the great patriarchs of this town in so many ways, uh, um, in, in, from environmental causes to everything else. So Johnny said he'd do that in a few minutes. Well, I'm just happy to be back for another COVID. This is our fifth COVID. So they went to Clifton and talked to the vet. And he said, God, I never heard of anything like that. The bull and the cow always made. And he's scratching his head and, Jesus, he said, I don't know what's wrong. He said, by any chance, did the cow come from Cashel Bar? And they said, that's amazing. How could you come to that? Oh, he said, my wife's from Cashel Bar. <laughs> and tell us where you are. I'm in Blackburn. Where you are? <laughs> and I met my wife in Chicago, and we got married in 1954. It'll be 59 years this week, this this year. And I, actually, I think that's a miracle. But anyway, <laughs> for her. Uh, <laughs>